The next thing I want to talk about is um, calling on children. Um, when I ask the same questions each week, uh, the beginning of class, how are you? How's the weather? What's the date? Uh, what day is it today? What time is it? Um, I always get the same kids raising their hands. Same kids every week. And um, the other kids, they are either afraid to raise their hand or they don't, you know, they're afraid to raise their hand just because for whatever reason or they're just not interested. So, um, one idea that I learned, I I forget where I learned it. It might have been at my orientation when I uh, first came to Tokyo. And um, I, it was with chopsticks. Uh, you take wooden chopsticks, like the cheap uh, wadiwashi, the disposable chopsticks, and um, however many kids there are in the class, you write their numbers. Uh, for I'm pretty sure for every elementary school, um, each student has a number. Uh, they their names are put in, uh, I guess I can't say alphabetical order, in order of the Japanese alphabet, I believe. And each child has a number, and they all know their numbers, except for maybe like the first or second graders. But um, they all have numbers. And so now, uh, at the beginning of class, when I want to ask, how are you, uh, you know, the other questions, uh, I pull out a chopstick. So let's just pretend this is a, um, let's just pretend these are chopsticks. They're not, but obviously they're not. But um, let's just pretend, and each one has a number. So uh, I'll say, you know, the first question, how are you? And I give them some time to think about it. I say, how are you? I give them a few seconds to for them to take the question in, but I think they're actually paying attention to which number I'm picking, so they kind of end up not listening anyway. So uh, I say, how are you? And then I pick one out and I read the number. Hmm, 16. And then, you know, they all look for, you know, whoever number 16 is. That person stands up, I say, how are you? And they answer the question. Um, it goes pretty well. Like, it helps them pay more attention because I think uh, the way that I used to do it when I would just say, how are you? And I would just wait for somebody to raise their hand. I'd say, oh, you. Okay, you, you. Um, the other kids that usually don't talk, they just kind of sit there, probably not paying attention to what's going on, not listening. So um, I figured out that uh, with some of them, they still don't know how to answer. You know, they hear, I'm fine, I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm sleepy. They hear it week after week. And then when I pick out a chopstick and I say their number, <clears throat> sorry, I dropped it, and I say their number, they stand up and they have no idea what to say. Or they're just so shocked that they have to stand up, you know, in the middle of the classroom and actually speak. But the point of English activities in elementary school is to speak. So this really helps me learn, you know, who's paying attention, who's not paying attention, who needs more practice, you know, who has it down already. So I've had one case where I chose a girl and you know, she's very, very nice girl, kind of quiet. Um, I've spoken to her before. I picked her number, and she just stood there for the longest time. It was, it was, how are you? That question is like, you can make stuff up. You can say, I'm happy when you're really, like, bored. You can say, you know, I'm fine. You can say anything. You can say, I'm hot, and you're not even hot, You can, but you can say it anyway. All I asked was, how are you? There's really no... There's no right or wrong answer to that. And she just stood there. She stood there and she just kind of stared. And you know, I tried to help her. I was like, I'm, I'm. And she just would not talk. And then like eventually, you know, when that happens, I usually just have to move on to the next person because I don't want to put them on the spot. And you know, for pretty much the rest of the class, like after I told her it was okay to sit down. 
pretty much for the rest of the class she was just sitting there like with her head in her hands like crying and I'm thinking I mean I know it sounds kind of harsh but I ask the same questions every week I ask the same questions every week and this particular question does not have a right or wrong answer why why is it that she had such a hard time so I mean I just I don't get it but that's you know it's good that I'm doing this because now now she knows I mean I've set it up so that I don't end up calling on the same people so basically after I take their numbers out um, I have an attendance sheet and I mark you know who's been called so that way the next week I can take them out and I can pick different people so at least she won't get pick picked next week since I already picked her number but it'll probably help her listen more closely because she knows that she'll be called on again at some point so and you know that the same thing goes for the rest of the kids because I, I don't want to sit there only teaching the children who are listening to me I, I want to make sure that they all learn so the chopsticks thing good idea I mean probably a good idea for uh, depending on how much control you have over the class, middle school, high school as well, um, it, it works for anybody because, you know, w once they see, you know, chopsticks, after a while they know what it means and they know that they need to be paying attention. So, it works pretty well. Um, I only use it for the 4th, 5th, and 6th graders. Um, I don't use it for the 3rd graders uh, because the way our system goes, uh, first grade and second grade only have classes once a month. Um, the third graders, uh, they, it's, you know, because they're third graders, it's their first year having classes every single week, so they're still getting used to having regular lessons, the regular lessons that they're going to be having for the rest of their years in elementary school. So I haven't used the chopsticks with them yet. Um, and who knows, I don't even know if the teacher that's going to come in after me is going to use them. I'll, I'll tell him or her, whoever it is that's going to be replacing me, I'll tell them uh, chopsticks are a good idea. So so that's, that's that. Um, let's see, what else is there to talk about? Uh, upcoming events. Um, I've been having to practice for a marathon lately. Um, actually my two schools are having marathons on two different days uh, I don't have to I don't I don't have to go to one of them because uh, it there every time an event a big event happens at school on a Saturday they take the next work day as a replacement day off so uh, the school that I go to on Tuesdays and Wednesdays their marathon is this Saturday and then their replacement day off is Monday, but since I'm going to be at the other school, um, that means I kind of don't have to go to the marathon for that one, for the Tuesday-Wednesday school. The, uh, the other marathon is on December 18th, two days after my birthday, yay. Um, I realized that I'm pretty out of shape. Uh, I, used to, I used to have, well, I never really had that much stamina, actually. Like, as far as running goes, I can run pretty fast, but I get tired very easily. So, uh, when we practice for the marathon, I try not, I try to run as slow as I possibly can without looking like, you know, an old lady. Because um, I get tired really easily. So, yeah, uh, hopefully it'll get better by that day, uh, the 18th. Still have some time left to practice. Uh, what else is coming up? Christmas is coming up. Um, I don't have any plans to go back home for the holidays, um, because it, I think it's, it's a little bit too soon for me, uh, to go back. And because that break is so short, um, I want to wait, probably want to wait until maybe the summer or maybe even next Christmas to go. So for now, I'm just going to go to Tokyo for winter vacation. Uh, haven't decided what I'm going to do for Christmas. Uh, Christmas is a couple's holiday in Japan. and uh, Me being single, I'm probably just going to walk around and go shopping or something with a friend. I don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, one more update. 
Uh, I don't know if you know about this. I don't know if I've mentioned this at all. But uh, starting on November 17th, the Japanese post office put restrictions on shipping. Um, anything that is over one pound cannot be sent by airmail, which is pretty much everything. Uh, you can still send it by sea, sea mail, which takes about two to three months, depending on the location. This ultimately screws up my plans for sending Christmas presents home, for sending any packages. I actually found out uh, as I was loading my packages into my bike basket and uh, one of my neighbors came in on his bike and he said, oh, are you going to the post office? You can't send those by airmail because of the restrictions that just started. And I said, oh, thank you for letting me know. And I took the packages out and came right back to my apartment. I'm very angry because um, this restriction was put in uh, in response to the security measures that the uh, U.S. have been has been putting in um, in response to a reported bomb that was intercepted from Yemen. So because of that, I don't even know how that's related because I don't think there are if there are terrorists in Japan. I mean, you never hear about anyone sending a bomb from Japan, so I don't see why Japan is restricting packages from their country to the U.S. But they are, so I just have to put up with it. I don't know how long the restriction is going to be in place. It really screws up everything. Um, I've put off sending all of my packages until the restriction is lifted, so... Um, but yeah, I hope it'll be soon, because Christmas is coming, and I had planned to send everything by EMS, which only takes three days. So I figured, might as well just wait, because at least if they lift this restriction like two weeks from now, then I can send it, it'll still only take three days, rather than, oh, well, let me just send it now by C-mail, and it'll take two to three months. So, you know, I could have waited for the restriction and send it by EMS. But anyway, that's... That's that. Um, so yeah, if you're trying to send something, uh, you'll probably find out once you get to the post office that you can't send it by airmail, but if you're watching and you're living in Japan, um, or you're expecting, if you're trying to order something from Japan, actually, I've heard that some, uh, some individual, some private sellers based in Japan, they can't send stuff either. So, uh, that, that really, um, it really screws up a lot of plans for people that are expecting packages and people that are trying to send them. So, really sucks. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, I went shopping uh, this past Sunday and I bought quite a few major items. Oh, let's see, I guess by major, few few major items. It's really only two items I bought, I think. Um, I'll take pictures of those and put them on my blog as soon as I can. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Um, so, I guess that is it. Just thinking. I don't want to forget anything. Um, Yeah, okay, if I forget if if I've forgotten anything, I'll just make another video or I'll just put it on my blog. So, okay. So, I guess that's it for now. Bye.